you're new to the Project Assassin series, don't forget to check out the previous episodes. Links to previous episodes and the entire playlist are in the video cards and description. Welcome to the channel. This is Technoscope. Calling all sports fans. Catch the podcast of real fans by fans. Call in, chat live, and watch the sports game every Sunday morning at 9.30 Central only on Hashtag Champs. This is amazing. Your setup is amazing. People understand. This is a Official right there now. There we go. Bro. Chicken nuggets, man. Chicken, I would chicken, of chicken. chicken nuggets. <laughs> the foundation of every great computer is the motherboard. And because Project Assassin requires an ITX motherboard, I decided to go with the ROG Strix Z370i Gaming Motherboard by ASUS. In the box, you will find the external Wi-Fi antenna, SATA cables, a very nice rear IO shield with the ROG logo, a tool to help you install the CPU properly, M.2 screws and accessories, the manual, a DVD-ROM for some reason, lots of cable ties, an LED header cable, and Republic of Gamers stickers. The ROG Strix Z370i gaming motherboard is designed to work with 8th generation Coffee Lake Intel CPUs and has all the necessary hardware and I.O. to meet the needs of the most demanding gamers. On the rear of the board, starting from the top left, we have a USB 3.1A port directly above a Type-C port. Both are listed as Gen 1, however, which seems like an odd move given the availability of the C port. Next, we have four USB 2.0 ports for your standard peripherals. To the right of that, there's one display port above an HDMI port. The revision of the display port is not listed, but the HDMI port is listed as 1.4B. However, because this is a gaming rig, Receiving a discrete GPU, these ports will not be used anyway. We also have a gigabit port above two more USB 3.1A ports, followed by the antenna connections for the 802.11ac and Bluetooth 4.2. And last but not least, unless you don't use the audio output on the motherboard, the standard audio connections. Looking at the board itself, we see the standard 24 pin header the RGB header, the front panel connector, four SATA 3.0 ports, and a USB 3.1 Gen 1 header. The board also has a USB 2.0 header, two fan headers plus one AIO header, a USB 3.1 Gen 2 header, as far as I know the only one on board, and of course, the 8-pin CPU power connection. The board also has two very important M.2 slots with support for NVMe. With all of that out of the way, it's time to add the board components.
If you have any questions or concerns, leave them in the comments below and I will try to answer them as quickly as possible. I hope to see you in episode four of the Project Assassin build. My name is Elemento and this is Technoscope. Technoscope is a Twisted Curve production.